I V M. Welcome to All Things Policy, a daily podcast supported by Pragati, a flagship media initiative of the Takshashila Institution. We're a bunch of policy nerds based in Bengaluru, and we like to bring a fresh perspective to Indian affairs, perspective to global affairs. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and join us for today's chat. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of All Things Policy. My name is Subhan, and uh, I'm your host for today. I have with me my colleague Sarthak. Welcome, Sarthak, to the show. Hi, Subhan. We are recording after a long time. Yes, thankfully for the listeners, because they would be hearing us too often. We hope everybody is keeping safe with all the rains and everything that's going on in this in the country. But on the economy and the tax front in particular, we've had a lot of activity in the last few days. We've read reports of changes in taxes on some goods and services. For example, food in cinema halls are are going to be cheaper after the GST Council has agreed to tax cut. So if you're going for a movie this weekend, you're in some luck. Okay. Another important development in the area of taxation is online gaming. Now, this has seen a lot of discussion. This will have some implications, serious implications for us. So, Sarfak and I will go into details about this as much as we can, but we'll look at it more from a public policy angle and not too much of a tax policy, tax uh, aspect itself. So, Sarta, can you just give us what was the uh, a brief synopsis? What is the re- what was the recent change and uh, developments around that? Yeah. So, last week, the GST Council decided that there will be a levy of twenty eight percent tax on the full face value of the bets involving online gaming, horse racing, casinos. Now. Uh, there were change, there are changes at two levels here one is the tax rate has increased and secondly the tax rate on the base right that has also changed previously if you let's let's look at online gaming so uh, the gst was 18% on the cross gaming revenue or the platform fees that means let's say i am an online gamer someone is an online gamer so Okay, you are we, placing your bid. I think before we go forward, we must make this disclaimer that neither of us are involved in online gaming betting or any of this. So it's not. <laughs> yeah, I'll ensure that I I don't name any of the platforms. Okay, so we are not uh, promoting any platform or other. Yeah. Yeah. So what was the case was, so if I if let's say we are playing some games and we place some bets, the platform will charge some fees. Whatever is fees is that on that there was a eighty percent one eight percent commission GST divide yeah not commission GST was that yeah okay. right commission for the platform maybe on that but now what is happening is whatever bets will be there right the total bet on that there will be a twenty eight percent. GST that will be divided right so this changes uh, the dynamics massively yeah so why i mean of course i get the point that the levy is large it is large and it is changing on what you are levying the charge also right so why is it so problematic from a gamer's perspective from a policy perspective from the company perspective yeah so look at it from let's say the overall right the company's perspective maybe so previously they had to pay some 18% on whatever platform uh, fees that they were charging now the tax that has to be paid is quite high right it has to be 28% of the entire pool amount and some of the basics of economic reasoning will tell you that even if you impose a tax through the producer or through the consumer both of them get impacted so in this case what will happen is both whoever whichever is the platform which is hosting the games or whoever is an online gamer both of them are going to get impacted the cost of online gaming is going to be is going to increase now and uh, again this will have now host of consequences and again we'll go to each of these consequences but do you have any thoughts someone at this point of time yeah i think at a more basic level more than just you know in terms of more than the tax rate itself the, the notification that has been given out does not really differentiate between the different platforms so you have gaming platforms which 
are supposed to be game game of skill and not so much chance it's clubbing together game of skill was and game of chance such as you know betting or you know other kinds of gambling or all of this so at a fundamental level you are combining different kinds of gaming or different yeah yeah so this basically this uh ruling is applicable to online gaming horse racing casinos lottery everything right so something like gambling uh, something like lottery might uh, be a type of a gamble right so it's thing of uh, chance uh, there's no such uh, inherent skill required mm. but something like online gaming requires skill right not everyone will have equal chance in a lottery we assume that everyone has equal chance in getting the rewards of that so there is a unique there's distinction that distinction has not been taken into consideration and also i mean all of these things right game online gaming horse racing casinos lottery all of them need not necessarily be put in the same bucket uh, larger framework in fact uh, there was this there was a report gom report was there they also mentioned that all of these things are more or less same in terms of nature and all of them have negative externalities i am not sure how did they arrive at that right i mean if you are saying that the nature of online gaming and nature of lottery casinos is the same i don't know on what basis you are talking about or if you're saying that all of them have negative externalities i'm not sure maybe something like a like you know, gambling can have uh, negative conse- negative externalities there are studies which find out that uh, gambling crime all those things they are correlated but with online gaming i'm not sure what is that negative externalities you are talking about mm-hmm. if let's say i am participating in online gaming uh, it's i as an individual who might get impacted i will bear the consequences of that but not necessarily a third party gets impacted by it externalities means that right yeah. but in case of gambling or something there is a possibility of the society getting impacted there are some studies which find out these kind of correlation that crimes and all can increase because of that and even if that is the case yeah, so- the solution might not necessarily be increasing the tax rates there can be different other ways to address it okay apart from this another problem or another thing that i realize here is see there are different models uh, of taxing online gaming world over international i mean it's not that online gaming is something that happens uh, only in india right world over uh, it, ha- it it is there right? it's one of those uh, predominant sectors in many places established sectors and there are different ways by which you tax uh, this particular sector and two models are primarily there one is the gross revenue gross gaming revenue tax model which we had till now mm-hmm. where again you are just levying some taxes on the gross gaming revenue which is basically the total amount of bet that is made minus the amount of money that goes into the prize pool and usually you have a high tax rate not not necessarily high but it will be in the range of moderate to high tax rate while the other tax model that we have is some countries do have it is the turnover tax model or deposit tax model here what you have is the entire pool that is created the entire betting pool that is created on that you have the taxes levied and usually the tax rate here is small so so what we are trying to do here is we had yeah it's not Suman. as if i mean we are the first people to levy a tax on this there are different i mean other yeah. countries follow different there are tax models yeah yeah but follow either of the two models but the problem with our cut our the one that we have now adopted is that yeah you were saying i mean we are taking the turnover tax model which typically has lower rates but we are imposing high tax rate on the turnover tax model right and again the tax rates that we are imposing also tends to be very high right even in this gross gaming revenue model you don't you typically don't have 28% tax right here we are taking the turnover tax model which typically has low tax rates on that we are imposing a 28% tax rate which again basically we are not in sync with the global practices and we might have taken the worst of both the scenarios okay yeah so this is the case then what could be some i mean straight off you can look at it and say that yeah there will be some losses uh, you know on all sides but what could be the unintended consequences what are I mean, we always have to analyze any policy through the lens of unintended consequences too. so what yeah so even before going into the unintended consequences right what can happen first of all right let's even before we go to the second order effects let's look at how 
things will pan out. Now, the secretary of the concerned ministry mentioned that this is something which can lead to increase in tax revenues. At this point of time, from online gaming, you have around 1500, 1700 crores. And the assumption here is after this, the tax revenues will be almost 20,000 crores. This is the assumption. Now, this kind of defies most of the economic reasoning, right? Whenever you have a tax imposed on something, the price increases. Now, if the price increases, what will happen? Price and demand, there is this inverse correlation. At higher prices, demand typically goes down, which in turn implies that there is high chance that lesser number of people might participate in these kind of activities. Unless the demand for online gaming is something which is inelastic. That means people can't do without uh, online gaming. There are no substitutes for it. It's something like essential products we have, right? Salt, sugar, those kind of things have inelastic demand. But I'm not sure whether online gaming has inelastic demand, right? People can't do without it and there are no other substitutes. I would assume that there are many other substitutes. And even if there are no substitutes within India's jurisdiction, maybe it will be somewhere else. So the thing is, whatever you are estimating that the revenues will increase to 20,000 crores might not be the case. Rather, the tax revenues can go down. What might happen is the market can go underground. So at this point of time, let's assume that there are some negative externalities. That is what the report talks about. And if the market goes underground, that those negative externalities will continue to be there. And at this point, and they will not even be regulated. It will be difficult to figure out where what is happening, where it is happening. And given that the kind of state capacity that we have, enforcing this might be difficult. Sure, yeah. And we also have to look at it from the point of view of the business itself. Given that high taxes, so there will be low demand and therefore they may have to, you know, get rid or, you know, size down their businesses and therefore loss of jobs. You know, that is one thing that a country like ours cannot afford at this point in time. Yeah, that is one thing I thought of. Yeah, um, exactly. So there was this report by Fiki and EY. They pointed out that the revenues from online gaming, it, it is somewhere around $120 billion. Like this is 2022 data and, and it has been growing at a very fast pace from $80 billion in 2020 to around $120 billion in 2022. And it is expected to be $153 billion in 2024, right? So this, this sector has been uh, getting revenues. It has been creating so many jobs in different parts of the country and in, and if you have these kind of heavy handled uh, regulation, then again, the revenues and consequently the jobs will get impacted. And as you are mentioning, this is something creating jobs is one of the most fundamental things that any economy should do. And for a country like India, it is very important. And some of our colleagues have been studying this, how we need to create at least what 20 million jobs per year. This is one of the sectors which could have added to that. But maybe we will not be able to do that. Yeah, just for some other stats on the on the market itself, uh, some other report that I read said that there are 400 million gamers and 500 plus gaming studio to studios in India. It has revenue of 2.8 billion as of today, and it is expected to grow to 5 billion or so, 5 billion US dollars by 2025. So this kind of a market and you have this kind of heavy handed regulation. This seems to be a little out of sync with our goals as such. But we'll take a break at this point in time. We'll come back and analyze a few more aspects of this. Topic. At this point, I would like to uh, just remind our listeners that the Takshila Institution also has a policy school where we provide public policy education. The graduate certificate in public policy is a 12 week long course and applications for that course are open. The course begins on September 2nd. So please uh, apply. Those who wish to learn public policy in greater detail, please apply to school.takshishila.org.in. You will have more details there too. Welcome back. We are discussing the recent changes in uh, gaming taxes on gaming uh, online gaming platforms. And uh, Sartak was talking about unintended consequences. We would like to little uh, step back and probably understand what could be the reason for this kind of policy change. Sartak, your views? Yeah, yeah, before that, just one thing I missed out. So the assumption of the secretary that it is going to increase from 1700 crores to 20,000 crores, the tax revenue, that is one of the assumptions here. But that might not also happen because 
as we are mentioning, the sector has been growing, but uh, because of this kind of policy interventions, it might so happen that there will be uh, dead weight losses. If the cost of online gaming increases, there is a chance of people who are at the margins will think about whether I really want to do this or I want to do something else. So the number of people so those tra- playing these games definitely. can go down. The number of firms which are in the sector might not necessarily grow at the same pace. Maybe they will figure out ways or they will find out other sectors which are much more, maybe more lucrative. As a result of which, the number of gamers, the number of transactions that are happening in these uh, platforms might go down, which in turn implies that the tax revenues can get reduced. So not necessarily the tax revenues will grow at the same pace as is being estimated. Yeah. yeah. Now coming to a question about what could be the reason for this policy change. Now, as of now, whatever evidence that we have, right, it seems as if we haven't, or at least whoever, uh, at least the GST council has not thought through many of the economic implications of this particular proposal. I'm not sure whether any particular scientific study was carried out. For example, they mentioned that all these kind of activities, they are of similar nature and they all have negative externalities. Now, I'm not sure whether they did studies for each of these sectors and figured out what is the extent of negative externalities and how much of these negative externalities can be addressed through tax policy measures, right? And who are the likely consumers who will not necessarily take up these kind of things because they can't, they will not be able to pay the higher prices. So as of now, I think economic considerations have not been the primary factor on the basis of which the decision is there. Rather, it seems more like a moral consideration that these kind of goods are not something which yeah these kind of services are something which people should not be uh, going ahead with in fact it fits into that category right 28 percent tax lab is typically those kind of things which are not essential which are luxury goods or which are sin goods so maybe there's a perception that these are some sort of things which are undesirable and the best possible policy intervention according to the counselors to address uh, or reduce uh, the prevalence of these kind of activities. So moral consideration seems to have presided, have has taken precedence over economic considerations. Okay. So how do you think, I mean, what lessons does this have for us going forward? You know? So first thing is I would say we should rather have economic reasoning guiding our policy instead of moral considerations. In fact, see, moral considerations on its own is not necessarily bad. But we should first think about whose morality we are taking into consideration. I mean, there are different, there will be different stakeholders over there, right? But whose morality it is. If our focus, if morality implies creating more jobs, if morality implies reducing the harms, what what are we talking about, right? So that is important. And maybe we should have looked at those things before going ahead with this. Any, any, anything else, Suman, you I want to add here? Yeah, I was also thinking of it from the lens of how should a government approach, like strictly saying sunrise industries or industries that have not settled fully or, you know, are still in, a, in the nascent stage of growth. Itself. So this, I think, provides some kind of lessons in the sense that should the government come down heavily at the start and, you know, levy taxes like this or make it difficult or should the government wait and watch or what should be the considerations about a government coming into an industry that is just growing now, th- these are some things that are food for thought maybe for yeah so one thing that i want to add here is since you you mentioned the term sunrise sunrise industries i would assume that these are all they, they do not i mean they are all new mm-hmm. might not have a lot of precedence in these cases now See, any sector, I would assume, if you are wanting the government to intervene, first of all, we need to find out the reason why the government needs to intervene, right? Ideally, we should look at it from the lens of market failures. Yeah. Is there any market failure? Is there concentration of market power or there it's a public good thing or it is a case of externalities or there is information asymmetry, right? So then you should step in. In some areas, maybe some sectors can give you some sort of strategic advantage yeah. to the semiconductor. country, to the state. Yeah, for example, semiconductors and all those, right? So maybe there there is a case for industrial policy. And also there is another reason other countries are also doing industrial policy. And if you are not doing it, you are at a disadvantage. But for something like online gaming, I'm not sure whether this holds true. So I would say first 
look at if there is any market failure and if there is any specific market failure use the right kind of policy tool to address that and ideally i mean you should study what is the extent of market failure here what if let's say there is negative externalities right what is the negative externality what is the magnitude of that uh, if the negative externality is not as much then you don't need to have some sort of policy intervention because you have these kind of policy interventions it will just lead to efficiency losses it will not necessarily boost your revenue resources sure yeah so two lens that we have seen this is one from governance of sunrise industries and two from the lens of uh, looking at market failure now is there another meta or more you know larger point or other points that you have for us to see this problem yeah so one more thing gst council was formed for a specific purpose right and at this point of time if you look at our tax system we have multiple tax labs and there are again different kinds of exemptions yeah. so there are ways by which f- firms can avoid paying taxes now all these things leads to revenue losses and as an economy we cannot afford to have revenue losses in fact we have to increase our tax to gdp ratio only when you have these uh, only when you have a higher larger pool of taxes then only you can achieve the other societal objectives right uh, you can spend on health education all those things so one of the things that gst council should be focusing on is reducing all these methods ways by which firms or ways by which you are basically having revenue losses or foregoing revenue yeah. so ideally it should focus on reducing the number of tax labs it should provide stability predictability to the tax system or the arbitrariness that by which they decide what goes into our tax labs those things have to be you know yeah sometimes it is arbitrary as well right now this is something which the recent uh, recommendation is going against this right now you are i mean you are continuing with the tax labs that you have and you have put one particular sector in a higher tax lab and it also Uh, impacts the stability and predictability of the tax system it not only impacts just the gaming online gaming sector it also impacts other sectors because those who are the entrepreneurs maybe they are in other sectors or foreign investors right so they will now have questions that overnight things can change and whatever calculations that they have made about profitability and all those things it goes for a toss true yeah. so that stability predictability of the tax system should be one of those fundamental things that the gst council should be focusing on and over a period of time they should reduce the number of uh, tax labs as well right so that also can give you some uh, consistency predictability and adding to one adding to the sunrise uh, sector thing that you mentioned right ideally our regulations should be such that i mean you should provide that light touch regulatory framework right you should facilitate sectors instead of treating them as if they are not paying their dues that's why we should charge them that kind of approach is there that they they're just at this point of time only 1700 crores we are getting from it we should get 20000 crores ideally the focus should be on ensuring that the sector flourishes right sector grows and that automatically will help you get higher revenues so focus on those things which can help in the expansion of the sector instead of focusing on just getting more revenue from the sector i think make might make more sense sure yeah uh, any other thoughts last closing uh, i think these were my closing thoughts in case you have something you can add to it no no nothing as of now we'll close this episode for now and we hope we have left our listeners with some food for thought not just about the online gaming and the taxation around it but generally to how to look at taxation and how to look at you know a policy regarding new sectors or policy regarding any of these things that will uh, impact economy right yeah so thank you for listening and we hope you'll come back for more thanks thanks so much thanks to the audience If you liked our show, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM network. You can tune into them on the IVM podcast app, ivmpodcast.com, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. You can also follow IVM on social media. The handle is at IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And hey, if you'd like to dive into Takshashila's research on technology, strategy, and economic affairs, check us out at our Twitter handle. at takshashila inst or our website takshashila.org.in